We don't need napkins. Where should we go? Back there? Yeah, back okay. there. <laughs> Hey, Jared. Hi. How are you doing, Josh? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you too, my friend. Tell me a little bit about Dusex. Where are we at right now and what's the place all about? Dusex is located in the Pilsen area of uh, Chicago. We're a beer-centric uh, restaurant. We love beer here. You know, that's kind of the philosophy we've kind of made, pairing beer to food. Hey, so how do you go about constructing your beer program here? That's a better question for Bob Begany, our uh, beer director. But really, just um, as many styles as can be put forth you know, to give people options. Basically, I try to pick things that are pretty unique, food-friendly stuff, stuff that's not gonna crush your palate, something clean and crisp, but like, like I said, it's gonna complement the food and not overtake it. So you pick the beers separately, then Jared goes and cooks the dishes, yeah. and so the pairings sort of come after the fact? Yeah, I think we do a, a nice little teamwork effort for that. And uh, well, Thank you, sir. No, no problem. <laughs> Our first dish we're gonna be doing today is a dish that traditionally I would pair with champagne. But in this case, um, I, I kind of step away from champagne and really look for uh, Pilsner, like something that kind of strips the palate a little bit and allows it, kind of cleanses it and allows you to taste these flavors a little better. And you can have multiple sips on there too, so it's not just a one-shot thing. You should probably do lots of sips. I am happy to do lots of sips. Don't so do you want to show me your first Yeah, step? sure. So we're doing some beautiful Shigoku oysters from the West Coast. These are gorgeous. They're a deep cup, light cucumber flavor, little minerality, which is going to work perfect with our flavors that are smoked ham. We're huge fans of American country hams. So what we've done is taken some of the scrap ham and uh, just basically made a, a really deep stock with it. And we're just gonna kind of splash a little bit on each one of these. And we're gonna top this off with a nice bit of caviar. And everyone loves caviar. Nice, so for this, will we drink the beer first, then do the oyster, or which way would you go about I doing this? I typically start most meals by drinking a lot before the meal. <laughs> And then take lubricating the booze with the food. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I would take a little bit of a sip, All right. refresh the palate. Cheers. And grab an oyster, or two, or five, and tip it back. Uh, Pilsner's usually, uh, we're all pretty familiar with them. Um, you know, it just kind of goes down pretty naturally. And it's just something clean and, and crisp at the, at the end there. I always kind of think seaside, exactly. cold beer, and oysters, mm -hmm. and just, you know, it's a delightful pair. Well, what's next? We're gonna do another chilled uh, presentation. We're gonna do a foie gras torchon with um, gingerbread, which is a nice seasonal kind of autumnal thing, toasted hazelnuts, a white balsamic caviar that we've made, compressed apples, and pickled grapes. And we're just gonna finish the dish with just a little floor to sell. And that's it. Simple, right? Very simple. <laughs> It feels like such a rich dish. What would sort of go with this? Um, so we have a farmhouse ale that's uh, been aged in some wine barrels. Farmhouse ales, when they originated, they aged in a, in a farmhouse at a higher temperature than a, than a lager. I think it pairs very well with the foie gras that we have here. It's a bit fatty and rich, so I think it cuts through that. And a lot of times, they're, I think, natural indigenous yeast to the region that they're getting brewed in. So exactly that's going to pick up that kind of terroir, that kind of individualness of each beer. And it goes really well with foie gras. Next, uh, Josh, we're gonna be uh, doing kind of a my take and riff on a classic New England clam bake. We're gonna start with a little bit of butter. A little bit of butter. There's nothing healthy about my food. We're gonna add some clams, which we've just briefly poached off. Charred corn, peewee potatoes that we've lightly smoked. Some uh, Prince Edward Island mussels. Some uh, garlic sausage that we make in house. And then a good, nice little lobster that we've blanched a beautiful corbiola. Got our landing pad here. We're gonna pour in our beer stock. Hit it with a little chive. And we're gonna throw her in the oven. And away she goes. It's what I like to refer to as a shirt ruiner. It will ruin your shirt. And no one gave us lobster bibs because we're not special okay. enough. But you have, a, you have a bib on. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> what should we pair with this? I lean towards a Saison or a farmhouse style beer. In this case, uh, one without sour notes that's more kind of round. Yeah, and I think the, the yeast of a Saison or a, a farmhouse lends itself to a little bit of peppery notes um, that we got in the saffron broth here. I think it, I think it pairs perfectly. Mmm, that's good beer. Yeah, it's a good harmony. So after that super fast clam bake, we have one more dish stuff. What do we have in store? This is a really, really beautiful, intricate steak dish. My kind of steak dish. So we're gonna start with our uh, lovely cleaned uh, bone marrow. And we're gonna pipe in some uh, horseradish parsnip marrow puree. We're gonna add a little Anna that we've made. Strip loin intricately across the plate. And then we're gonna add our vegetables. And this is what I like. You know, it's still a rustic kind of plate of food. And then the fun part is we're gonna, we're gonna finish it with a little bit of foie gras powder. 
and in this case, maybe a lot of foie gras powder. And that's our steak plate. So a beautiful diet meal. Yeah, it's healthy living. I really like a stout for a dish like this. Um, I think at this point in the meal, the you know slamming back of beer stops, the sipping and the appreciation kind of starts. And whereas a lot of people would pair um, stout with more into a dessert wine, I really like it because it kind of plays off the caramely notes of charred meat and the Brussels sprouts. And uh, you know, it's 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 more of a thinker than it is a guzzler. And Bob, what beer are we drinking? Uh, we're gonna drink the uh, Goose Island Bourbon County Stout. It is a savoring thing, you know. I, I like to savor my meat as well as my beer. So you could start out early and crush some pilsner, and then. Uh, we can savor some stuff, I think. Yeah, it's a beer that forces you to kind of sit back, contemplate, take a good time to be with friends a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, my philosophy on cooking is that get the best that you can afford to serve, treat it simply, you know, don't manipulate it too much. I like to bring a little sense of fun and whimsy to stuff to kind of lighten it up. Yeah, I, you know, high end uh, for everybody. Well, Cheers. Thank you so much, Jack. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. Mmm, that's good beer.